Hello, Homestead. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for a moment of silence. Helping keep Southwest Allen County Schools safe each day, meet School Resource Officer Roberson's new counterpart, K-9 Officer Loki. Plus, with the ISMA canceling the fall competition season, the Spartan Alliance Band is coming up with another way in order to continue working on a show for this year. Those stories and more straight ahead. Thank you for joining us. I'm Tyler Wright. And I'm Easton Hensley. You may have noticed a dog roaming the halls this school year, but have you wondered who he is and what he's doing here? Homestead School Resource Officer, Officer Roberson, now has a companion by his side to help keep our district safe. HHS and depth reporter Andre Santliver got a chance to learn about the new school's canine officer, Loki. The start of a new school year brings friends back together and creates new companionships. The Homestead staff is no exception. Our very own school resource officer, Officer Roberson, introduces his close friend, Loki, the new canine officer for our school. I'm Officer Bill Roberson. I'm a police officer with the Allen County Police Department. I am a resource for the staff and students uh, in the school uh, for law-related things. I assist the school with uh, their investigations at some point, and then other times I conduct criminal investigations. My canine partner went through the Allen County Police Canine Program, and Loki's trained to detect certain items of contraband, being guns, uh, gunpowder and human odor, and the human odor is especially important when it comes to tracking. As a trained canine officer, Loki is often under commands, which prevents him from being able to interact with in-school students. I would appreciate it if uh, everyone would ask me prior to petting him, because people wouldn't necessarily know whether I said, hey, uh, Loki, I want you to do this, or I want you to do that, or he's just hanging out being a dog. I do have a, a vest that Loki wears that says sheriff on top and do not pet on the sides. I haven't brought him inside without that, especially in the beginning part of the school year because I wanted everybody to get the chance to come back, settle into their classes, into their schedule uh, without introducing that. And I just don't want to overwhelm them right away with everybody wearing masks and there'd be a bunch of people that want to come up and say hi to him all at once. Loki should be appearing more frequently throughout the school year. Be sure to tell him how good of a boy he is and thank both him and Officer Roberson for keeping our school safe. For HHS In-Depth, I'm Andre Salenover. Tyler Easton, back to you. Thanks, Andre. Students who are needing to apply for dual credit for Ivy Tech, this is your reminder that your application and all steps required need to be completed prior to the new September 18th deadline. Again, a reminder that Ivy Tech dual credit applications are all due by September 18th, which is next Friday. In other dual credit news, the deadline for the online registration for dual credit at IU has been extended to September 25th. Students who are taking courses paired with IU need to make sure to read their two emails from ACP, which is the IU dual credit program, and complete all steps outlined in those emails to enroll prior to the September 25th deadline. Senior Spartans, several scholarships have been recently added to the HHS scholarship listings page. Be sure to review this by visiting the guidance page on the Homestead website or the HHS Class of 21 campus page. Today after school, the Homestead Young Progressives Club is having its second meeting. Get down to Ms. Smith's room, number 614, to learn more about the impacts of climate change. Everyone is welcome regardless of political affiliation. The Homestead Spartan Alliance Band had their competitive season derailed due to COVID-19, but that doesn't mean they still aren't practicing a show to perform. HHS and depth reporter Cora Shaw catches up with the marching band to learn what the plan is for them now that there is no ISMA season. Despite ISMA canceling all competitions for the 2020 season, the Spartan Alliance marching band has still been able to find ways to practice and create a modified show. So obviously the season is a lot shorter because it's shorter. Um, we're doing a smaller show. So with the smaller show, um, we don't have as much choreography to learn. So we can spend all the time just on the basics, on the technique every single day, just honing in on those skill sets. And then for our performance, we're going to be reusing older costumes. So it's going to be really cool just to see those again um, back on the field. Mr. Warfield is grateful for the opportunity to still be able to get together as a band. In a statement, he said, 
The most important aspect of this season to look forward to is the fact that we can still do marching band in any capacity. Without a season, we could have ended up with half of our program never having participated in marching band. We have the chance to still learn a show, go through a season, and have performances. So even though our competition this season was canceled, it's still great to be here and have a modified season because we still have a community night on September 19th and it's great that we can even come out and practice and have somewhat of a normal season so that next year and the years after, the kids who are still here will have knowledge to build on and so they can come back and do even better next year. The marching band hopes to persevere through this year and come back stronger than ever for the next competition season. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Cora Shaw. When we come back, you'll meet one of Homestead's aspiring entrepreneurs who is currently hosting her own business on Etsy. Meet her and what her business is when we return. In a future episode of HHS In Depth, reporter Easton Hensley will bring you a story over Homestead's radio shows, how they are made, and how you could be a part of them. Get out to the Environmental Club's first call-out meeting on Monday after school in Miss Merkling's room, room 206. If the weather permits, be sure to dress to go out to the Environmental Center. Bring a friend and don't miss out on their meeting. They hope to see you Monday at 2.45 in room 206. Young Americans for Freedom is back again this year, meeting from 2.40 to 3.15 on Tuesdays to talk current events and politics. Go join them in room 718 next Tuesday. All political views are welcome. The first Latin Club meeting is Tuesday, September 15th. Get out to Ms. Beckman's room, room 604B at 2.45, or zoom in from home. See the Canvas group for more details. There is a new club at Homestead. The ASL Club, which means American Sign Language Club, will be meeting every Thursday after school in the seminar room. Be sure you have a ride at 3.45. All are welcome to attend and learn a fun way to communicate. The first meeting will be Thursday, September 17th. Homestead is full of young and aspiring entrepreneurs, ranging from all sorts of different ventures. HHS In Depth reporter Michelle Obiyama introduces you to a student who has her own business on Etsy, where she creates and designs stickers. Many Homestead students use their free time to create art, whether that be drawing, performing, or even making stickers. Sophomore Elizabeth Blade happens to be one of these students and has turned her passion for creating stickers into a business. I started creating stickers around the beginning of January of 2020 and I really started getting into digital art and just really enjoying it and some of my friends heard that I was making kind of sticker designs and stuff on my iPad. They would ask me to make all different kinds of designs and some of them were kind of weird but I just thought it was really fun and it was really cool to be able to just take what they wanted and make it a sticker and so the more I started doing that I started making stickers for myself, my friends, my family and then I kind of realized that I wanted to maybe get some better paper and then possibly sell them. After beginning her business, Elizabeth learned that her biggest inspiration comes from her art supplies. For a lot of my sticker sheets, I like to focus on color scheme. I think playing with color is a really fun way to make fun sticker sheets. So once I have an idea, I go to my iPad and I use an app called Procreate and it's just really easy app to use and I draw my designs on there. The next, I upload it to my Cricut app and I go to print it out of my printer. And then once it's out of my printer, I'll attach it to my printer mat and I'll put it right in my Cricut for it to cut it. You can find her, her stickers, and more at Doodle and Daisy on Etsy. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Michelle Biyama. With the presidential election less than two months away, some Homestead students will be eligible to vote this year. To learn more about how to register and the importance of voting, here's HHS In Depth reporter Cole Steinecker. Many Homestead seniors will be turning 18 before November 5th, meaning that you'll finally be eligible to vote in this year's upcoming election. Mr. Cogdell walks through some of those steps and the benefits of why eligible students should vote. Well, it's important to get registered to vote because if you, if you want to vote, you have to be registered. It's required by law. And the deadline is one month before election day, so you'd need to be registered by October 5th. And to be registered, you'd want to go to Indiana Voters, and you should have your driver's license with you. And of course, you got to be 18 years old and a citizen. If you don't have a driver's license, then some kind of state ID. But it's a very easy process, only take you a couple of minutes to get registered. It's important to vote for many reasons. One, one, way to, one reason to vote is that we get to evaluate the person who has the office. If somebody's done a great job in a healthy democracy, we get to choose. We get to decide, did they do a good job? Um, if you're really fired up about a particular issue, whether it's education, whether it's 
um, gun rights, whatever it is that's interesting to you or important to you, you need to find candidates who value those ideas. It's a very exciting time. Um, we have an election in November that right now looks to be close nationwide. So every vote would matter. I think it would be fascinating to see how these precincts out here in an avoid vote because they might be very similar to how the election results go nationwide. As a final reminder for students, if you're very passionate about a specific topic, make sure to vote so your opinions can be heard. Reporting for HHS In Depth, I'm Cole Steinacker. Turning to weather now, we've had a little bit of a cool down these past few days, so does that mean that fall conditions will continue? Carly Flanagan joins us now with a check of the forecast. For tonight's game against Wenger, you can expect pleasant temperatures in the mid-60s. Heading into the weekend, the weather will stay fairly consistent with cloudy skies and temperatures in the 70s. I'll be back later with a check of the forecast. All right, thank you, Carly. Next in sports, Homestead kept it rolling on the football field last Friday. Ashton and Caleb will have a recap. Plus, find out how our other athletic teams did this past week. We'll be right back. Happy Friday, I'm Ashton Ackman, and boy, do we have a jam-packed segment this week, so let's get rolling, starting with week three of SAC football action. With a recap of the game from Lures Field, here's sports reporter Caleb Wood. The Spartans, fresh off their shutout win in week two over Concordia, took on the Bishop Lures Knights at Lures Field last Friday, with a chance to get back in the hunt in the SAC title race. And the Homestead offense did not waste any time this week getting on the board early in the first quarter as senior Evan Ormsby hit junior Nate Anderson on this screen pass. He takes it to the end zone for the touchdown, putting the Spartans up 7 to nothing. A few moments later, the Spartans were back in the red zone. This time, senior Braden Hardwick gets in on the scoring as he scampers in from 7 yards out, and before the end of the first quarter, Homestead jumped the lead up to 14 to nothing. Fast forward to the end of the second quarter and it's Braden Hardwick again, this time scoring the fourth and goal from two yards out, and we headed to halftime with the Spartans leading 21 to nothing. The offense kept rolling in the second half. This time, Ormsby goes deep with the ball and hits Nate Anderson for a 36-yard touchdown, and the Spartans stretch their lead out to 28 to nothing. After a Lures touchdown, Braden Hardwick picked up his third rushing touchdown of the night, putting the Spartans up 35 to seven in the middle of the fourth quarter. Carter Dixon capped off the scoring, drilling this 33-yard field goal which gave the Spartans a 25-point win, 38-13. After three weeks in the SAC, only two teams remain undefeated, and the Bishop Dwanger Saints come into Dave Walters Memorial Stadium tonight, a huge opportunity for the Spartans to shake up the conference. Too often do you hear of an athlete breaking a school record in their respective sport, but rarely do you hear of a freshman crossing that barrier. But for one Homestead athlete, that became a reality as she crossed the finish line during last Saturday's race. For Addison Canablo, her running idol was her driving force. The girl who had the record before me, I've looked up to her for like a while now, and you know, she was a really great runner. So to be able to just like be where she was at, it was exciting. So the course was really flat and fast. There were also some very fast girls there. So just to be able to like work with them, that helped me just improve a lot. Coach Sarah Wiss hopes the momentum of a state-ranked individual runner can help propel the team to a great finish at the state championship. I think every week we make strides towards um, great improvement. Um, you know, Addison is way out in front, but then having our pack move in a, in a small pack, um, once we get them closer to the front, I think that it'll pay great dividends. Taking a look at recent Homestead athletic action over the past week, the girls golf team was in action at Chestnut Hills on Tuesday night. The Lady Spartans took down DeKalb 148 to 219. Amy Frazier shot two under par. The team travels to Franklin Central Invite tomorrow morning. The boys soccer team trampled DeKalb 
0 on Wednesday night, the Spartans were led by sophomore Jaden Venturini and senior Thomas Gallagher, who both shot two goals. They now sit at 4-1-2 and two on the season as they gear up to face Cathedral here at home tomorrow. The Homestead Volleyball team hit the on Tuesday night, senior Anna Moster led the team with six kills, Emery Carrico had three blocks, and Michaela Kelly had ten digs. The team will be in action at home against Huntington North on Tuesday. Both cross-country teams placed seventh at the Marion Invitational over the weekend. The girls' team was led by freshman Addison Canablo, who placed fourth, breaking the previous school record 5K time, and Elise Peckinpah, who placed 36th. On the boys' side, three Spartans broke 17 minutes in the 5K. Junior Ethan Bates led the Spartans with a 10th place finish. Seniors Donnie McArdle and Henry Myers shortly behind him in 19th and 31st respectively. Both teams are in action at the Bruin Invitational tomorrow morning. And the boys' tennis team took home a 5-0 win at Warsaw on Wednesday night. They will be back in action here at home tomorrow morning. The Locker Report staff had a unique opportunity to get exclusive sounds you don't normally get to hear during a football game. Thanks to Coach Zolman, we were able to catch his audio during the game, hearing what he had to say from the sidelines. You can find the full video on both our Instagram and Twitter pages. That's all for sports. Carly has a final check of the forecast after the break. On a future HHS In Depth, the Homestead Reconstruction Project has officially begun. Ashton Hackman walks the blueprints with Principal Dr. Ginder. Learn what the new building will look like and see the project plan only on HHS In Depth. Over the next week, temperatures will remain in the 70s and we will still see some sun as we head into fall. Monday through Wednesday will be mostly sunny while the rest of the week remains partly cloudy. Nights are starting to get chilly as the lows remain in the 50s. Overall, it should be a pretty nice week. Tyler and Easton, back to you. All right, Carly, thank you. And thank you for watching today. Don't forget that the Homestead Spartans are back in action tonight at home against the Bishop Dwinger Saints. You can watch all the action on the Homestead Media YouTube channel with the OPS pregame show with Matt Salfrank and Chris Corman taking the air at 6.15 p.m. and the kickoff set for 7 p.m. You can also get quarterly score updates by checking the Locker Report's Twitter page, and Ashton and Caleb will be in to recap the action next week in sports. Have a great weekend.